Good evening. This is Donna from the LaSalle Public Library welcoming you to tonight's Zoom programming. Uh, before we begin tonight's program, our usual run of announcements tomorrow night, seven o'clock. Fireside chat with author John Sanford, um, interviewed by also author Carl Hyacin. There have been many, many uh, questions submitted system-wide, but also by LaSalle patrons. If you are joining us tomorrow night, we're looking forward to a really great program. If you haven't signed up for this program, we do have just a few spots left. Um, feel free to, to join us now if you would like by reaching um, Rachel at the email that's showing on the screen or at the contact shown on the screen or through Facebook. And we can still get you set um, for that program tomorrow night at seven. Also coming up, we have Lisa Sons on April 20th. Lisa will be back with more birding adventures. Um, she's telling us um, what is soaring overhead this spring and it'll be our backyard birds coming back and how to keep them visiting our yard. Also looking forward to our first program in May, on May 4th, Claire Evans will be back with a totally unique program. The Politics of Tea, the East India Company, and British Tea Culture. I am so looking forward to this program. I hope you'll be able to join us. So if you can mark that on your calendar, that would be great. For tonight's program, we're welcoming back Natalie Martin, Master Gardener at the Extension Office. Tonight, we're starting Natalie's Cooking for Us series, uh, Grow Your Own Garden Bever Beverage Garden. Um, and sometime, while uh, Nat Natalie is presenting, could you put in the chat directed to all panelists and attendees, if you have done any planning for your garden for this year, have you started any seeds? Uh, have you picked out anything that you plan on gardening? Are you making raised beds or turning over that soil? Let us know where you are with gardening this year. And if it's nowhere, that's fine too. That's why you're here. Uh, we want to hear from you. So in the chat box and check all panelists and attendees. And with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen and my microphone. And Natalie, are you with us? I am with you. I was being silent so that I didn't accidentally talk over you, which I am, of course, known to do. Um, hi, everybody. I'm going to share my screen and uh, whoa, that's big. And then I'm also going to turn my face on because I dressed up for you. I felt like beverage gardens was like, like we were meeting for drinks, even though they're non-alcoholic. So um, this is what my face looks like when I'm not, when I'm not just in my regular day, I have makeup on today. So hi everybody. Um, thanks for joining us again. I don't know if any of you have attended. I know there's a couple of familiar names in there. So um, if you've attended some of my programs before, I'll give you an update on my garden. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing tonight. Um, but my I did a lot of seeds starting this year. I was extremely ambitious. Uh, so I don't know what's gonna happen to all of them, but I um, we wanted to grow a lot of peppers this year. We wanted to grow a lot of tomatoes this year, different tomato varieties. Um, and I have uh, fortunately or unfortunately 38 jalapeno plants that I now have because I was like, oh, well, they're not all gonna live. And then they did. So I have 38 of them. So we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll give some away. Who knows? Uh, so I've got some um, jalapenos this year and tomatoes. Uh, we're growing a cut flower garden this year, which I'm very excited about. With the whole uh, south facing side of my house, I'm gonna do with cut flowers because they need a lot of sun. Um, so I'm pretty excited about some of the stuff that I've got going on. Um, tonight we're talking about beverage gardens and, and the concept of that is gonna be about things that you can use to make beverages that you can drink. Um, whether they're alcoholic or non-alcoholic, it's up to you. All the ones I'm talking about tonight are alcoholic. Um, the, uh, yes, Anna, salsa parties. Exactly. I'm going to be, well, we have uh, grow your own appetizers coming up in May. So we'll talk a little bit about that too. So yeah, exactly. I'm going to have lots of salsa. We're going to make our own hot sauce this year, which is why we grew a lot of jalapenos and you can roast them and do all sorts of things. You can freeze them, stuff like that. So um, well, that's a, that's a different, that's a different class. So I will jump right in. I will turn off my face because 
I find it distracting and I will stare at myself talking, but uh, we'll talk about beverage gardens tonight. Um, what is a beverage garden? So in my opinion, a beverage garden is something that you're growing specifically um, so that you can make drinks. And that might mean um, syrups that you use to flavor things. That might mean um, tomatoes that you make into Bloody Mary or Virgin Mary mix. Um, we're gonna talk about strawberries and um, lemons and things like that. Uh, beverage garden could be inside, beverage garden could be outside. It's really gonna be up to you and it's pretty flexible. Um, they don't have to take up a lot of space. If you've been to my programs before, uh, my container gardening or growing growing food, no matter garden size, there will be a little bit of repeat content because we'll talk about um, kind of what all the different options are about how you can grow these beverage gardens. Um, I would say like 90% of people are gonna grow this type of a garden in containers because it's gonna be very specific. Um, but uh, you, it's really gonna be up to whatever works for you. Um, can you drink it? That's, that's how you determine a beverage. Um, uh, there's a really big movement right now for mocktails. You know, a lot of folks are cutting out, um, uh, cutting alcohol out of their lives. Um, I've definitely made a choice to, to drink less alcohol, but if you still want to have that special drink, um, every once in a while. So, so like a mocktail or something like that is really fun. And that's, you get, you can get really creative with what you do with the amount of different flavored seltzers that there are right now. You can really make a ton of fun drinks. Um, so we'll cover a couple of different things. Herbs are going to be the very tail end of what we talk about because they're going to be maybe the biggest chunk of what people might grow to flavor their beverages. Um, fruits for sure. Uh, tree fruits, yes, but most likely small fruits is going to be um, what what folks would would be able to grow on a in a smaller scale. And then like vegetables, like what do you mean? How are you having vegetables in your um, in your drinks? But the we're going to talk about a Virgin Mary mix um, that uh, uses tomatoes, celery, onions, bell pepper. Um, so all those things you can grow in your own garden. I forgot to say, um, at the beginning in the chat box, there are links to recipes that I talk about tonight. Um, two of those recipes are ones that I adapted for this program. One of the recipes is directly from, um, Locavore Boulder. Um, they, uh, they um, are for simple syrups and different recipes. It looks so good. I didn't think it needed any tweaking, but um, the other two recipes that I included in there, um, I adapted for either smaller quantities or to kind of tweak the recipe till I thought they were more usable. Um, the other things that are in the chat, if you scroll up, there's the um, directory through the University of Illinois Extension. There's a fruit tree directory, um, small fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Um, really quick, I don't know if I said who I was. I know Donna did. Sorry, I kind of just barreled in there, assuming everyone knows who I am. But I am Natalie Martin, Master Gardener. I'm a virtual assistant and outdoor educator. Um, based here in Oglesby. So you probably, but again, you all know who I am at this point. Um, so where should you put your garden? Like I said, if you've been to these, my gardening programs before, where some of this might be repeat information. So I'm going to kind of run through it a little fast, um, but you can um, always, you know, ask a question in the chat. And if you have something specific you want to know about, um, but really your garden should make sense for you. So whatever space you have, obviously plants need sun is one of the most important factors when you are, um, trying to decide what to grow and where to grow it. Um, if you only have a small patch of sun, maybe you want to grow a container garden. If you have a patio, you, container garden would be great. Um, I find raised beds to be really versatile because you can control what the soil co content is um, and you can really pl place them a lot easier. If you have an unlevel spot, you can kind of even it out. So those, I guess, would be my two choices if you're just trying to um, you know, get a, a, a garden in, um, especially, you know, where it's, it's April, our last frost date is coming up in a couple of weeks. So we want to do what's going to be able to, to be easily done, you know, pretty quickly. Obviously, if you don't start till mid, mid season, you still have time. If you're buying, you know, whole plants from the store, you're not growing things from seed, you still have time to get some production in. So really there's no, there's no worries. If you're growing stuff from seed, you're going to really want to, to have, um, gotten those going. Um, but if you aren't going to do a raised bed or container garden, you'll definitely want to test your soil, make sure there's no heavy metals or toxins in there, um, because especially with food crops, whatever's in your soil is going to go right into your food. So 
that's why you hear a lot about organic gardening and things like that, because there's none of those chemicals in there. Um, but the same thing happens with your soil. If you don't know what your soil is made of, you don't know what's going into your food. So you really want to have your soil tested if you're going to grow directly in the ground. Um, and like I said, where does your yard get the most sun? That's going to be your biggest factor. Um, food crops need to have a lot of energy and, and plants get their energy from the sun. That's what photosynthesis is. It's taking that sunlight and turning it into energy for the plant. So you want your those crops that are making food, um, fruits, vegetables, those are going to need a lot more sun. Herbs are a little bit more flexible because they're not fruiting um, plants. So you don't have to worry as much about that energy. Quick notes about raised bed gardening. It's pretty easy to control the water and the nutrients because you're adding all that soil after the fact. If you're a person that has um, limited mobility or, or pain for bending down or crouching, um, you can really raise that um, raised bed up as high as you need it. There's some that even come on platforms so you can you don't have to bend over. Um, and they're less restrictive about where you can put them. This is a long skinny um, raised bed that's on screen. So you can kind of fit that in maybe in a spot where a big garden plot wouldn't be able to fit. In-ground gardening, um, some folks think it's more affordable because you don't have that soil that you have to purchase and things like that. Um, you don't have to build that raised bed or purchase it. So yeah, if you have great quality soil, um, that's a great option. Is it less work? Well, you have to till it, you have to fertilize it, you have to do those kinds of things. You have to weed it a lot more. So it might be less work um, at the beginning, but maybe not over time. It really just depends on what your preference is. Um, but yeah, it really works great and it's, it's kind of easy and is the least amount of overhead cost. And then container gardens. I think I said this at the beginning, but um, container gardens are probably going to be um, the best option for those of us that um, maybe have limited space or, or just want to throw something in. The nice thing about um, having a beverage garden and containers is you can bring those herbs or those um, things inside. Um, and if you have a good spot inside, you can continue that beverage garden all throughout the winter. Um, I do that with some of my herbs. I will move them inside or into my garage um, to keep them over, you know, overwinter them. Um, or, you know, sometimes I can continue to harvest all year round. But the plants sometimes will go, if they're a hardy plant, hardiness means they're able to tolerate your, the level of cold. Um, they will go into a dormant phase over the winter and then they'll open, come back up. And that's, you know, that's what makes a perennial is it goes into that dormancy and then grows again in the spring. Um, but you can really, um, Beverage gardens in containers make give a lot of flexibility um, in, in your move, being able to move them around or having maybe a beverage garden up on your patio so you could like have it with a party because it's almost time to have parties again. We're vaccinated. We're getting out there. It's exciting. And then my last suggestion is to go vertical and having a vertical garden really um, enhances your space, you know, and being able to use it. You can, on this top right one, you can see there's basil. These are Aurora peppers. I'm actually growing these this year. I'm very excited. And it looks like maybe parsley and maybe some cilantro. Um, it's hard to tell from back here, maybe rosemary up here. So this would be a great option for, this is just rebar and certain terracotta pots. Um, so you would put the pot in and then plant the flower in there so that you don't damage the, the plant going in. And then these ones are made out of uh, old pallets. Um, and as long as you, you know, some pallets have a lot of chemicals on them. So you want to check that out. And then this one down here is made out of old water bottles. Um, this one looks like it's a uh, maybe hanging out of a window box. So we're really utilizing a lot of your space. Um, Anna asks, what about vertical gardens on walls? Is that mainly for flowers because of the lack of room to grow up? So there's a lot of different options for walls. This, uh, this example here with the rebar, you could set that right up against a wall. Um, and you would have plenty of space to grow upwards. I grow um, a vertical garden along my fence line and with um, little, they're like pots that are made for, I'm gonna turn on my camera because I'm using a lot of hand gestures. Um, so the, the pots are straight flat on the back and then they're lower in the front so that plant can kind of cascade over. Now we did tomatoes in containers um, that way last year, we did lettuces. Uh, herbs, and it worked really well. The tomatoes, maybe they started to get heavy, so we tied them up with a little bit of twine so that they didn't fall out. Um, we're going to grow some peppers that way this year, some of those exact Aurora peppers that you see in this picture. Um, it's 
so you can, it, it's not limited to just flowers. You can do um, herbs, you can do just about anything. So that's, vertical gardens are, are a great option. Um, there's this, my mom has one called a woolly pocket. I'm gonna, ugh, I don't know why I keep turning my camera off. A woolly pocket, but it's like, it's made of this heavy duty wool felt and it's little pockets and she can plant plants down in it and then you water it through the back so the wool absorbs the water and then waters the soil so there's a bunch of options out there some are plastic some are you know terracotta it's it's just really what you want to do um so vertical is a great option if you have a limited amount of space or you just want to use as much space as possible um the what kinds of plants should you grow? Always, you know, this is a repeat from the last time, but what will you use? You only wanna grow what you're gonna use, unless you're growing it just to look at, and then great. Um, in this picture, there are some, looks like chives, some thyme. This looks like actually a strawberry to me, and then some rosemary. So this is a great example of potential beverage garden, because you can use some rosemary, you know, that savory um, herbal kind of flavor. Strawberries would be great. Thyme is an amazing herbal flavor. You could mix with just about anything. Chives, maybe not, but maybe in a Bloody Mary. Um, so really kind of think about what, how much space you have. Think about um, what you'll actually use. Is my audio gone? I guess, raise your hands. I guess if you have audio, you can hear, you get a little raise your hand button um, if we need to help. Okay, we thanks. can hear you. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. Yeah, I can see a lot of raised hands. So um, the, I'm sorry, I missed the name of the person who's having trouble with the audio. Uh, you might wanna check your uh, computer volume, Kendalene. Sorry about that. Um, the, um, we have no chat. There's nothing in the chat. That's very weird. I'll have to, we'll have to kind of get that figured out later so that we're not you know all trying to have me troubleshoot that while we're on on air here but um we'll get that content if you if you don't have anything in your chat um donna and rachel are going to post that on the website afterwards so you can always go there for the resources that i posted in the chat earlier so sorry about that we'll take um, care, natalie we'll take care of that and sounds um, great i think we're we're back okay with everybody. If if someone is not okay with this, please put it in the chat. If you can't hear or you can't see uh, the chat, if you can't see anything, then um, email Rachel. And um, let's just try to go ahead and see what. Yeah, happens. no worries. Um, this program will be available on the website for anybody that is going to access it later. So that's not a problem. You can always watch it for till the end of time. It's a good thing I put on makeup today. Um, so we'll jump right into um, plant selection. I think I clicked ahead a little bit here by accident when I was trying to to work that out. Um, I included in the chat and we'll have it on the website later um, a couple of different directories I'm going to click on this and I hope you guys can still see it but this is again a repeat from the last time but this is a directory from the extension I'm not going to go to all of them because they're all very similar but um, this is a small fruits directory these would be if you wanted to grow strawberries or other kinds of berries ones that will grow in Illinois pretty well um, if you wanted to grow some of those um, this is a good resource uh, to use them. And, um, and then if you, there's a directory also for uh, fruit trees. If you do want to make an investment in a fruit tree now, fruit trees, things like apples, pears, uh, plums, peaches, they do grow great in Illinois. You can even grow things like pecans, but big space takers, big resources, and a big investment of time. So if you're planning to grow those, um, don't plan on getting fruit for a couple of years. Uh, small fruits, you know, you can usually get something after a couple of seasons, maybe even one season if you're buying a fully fledged plant, not a bare root. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking, you got to think long term, though, if you're going to invest in some even fruit plants or fruiting trees, um, you're, it's going to be some time. But if you already have those, amazing great, lucky you, I'm jealous. I don't have enough space for fruit trees. 
Um, there is also an, a vegetable directory. Um, we did reference a couple different vegetables. Um, I did find, I don't, I'm, we're not making this, but there's a place that's using pea shoots, um, this, which is in the picture here, pea shoots to ferment into a non-alcoholic, like, like elixir. I don't know. It, it has like the feeling of an alcohol. It's called seed lip, but it's um, got the feeling of an alcohol but it doesn't have any alcohol content at all whatsoever. So you're feeling like you're adding an alcohol to it, to your drink, and it tastes like there's an alcohol in it, but there's, there's no actual alcohol by volume. So it's kind of an interesting thing, but you can really use, so they ferment pea shoots and hay. It sounds weird, but trust me, it, it actually tastes pretty good. So um, there's some things out there that you can do with vegetables to, to make your own kind of cocktail. So the, these will all be resources that are available. And again, there is an herb directory. Um, I think I referenced this earlier, but herbs are very popular for beverage gardens because there's a lot of different things that you can do with them. Um, you can make them into syrups. You can just add the whole leaves. Um, and then they're also pretty and they're good smelling and the bees like them. So there's really a lot of great things you can use them for cooking as well. Um, and some things like thyme, um, sometimes rosemary, depending on where you plant it, um, but thyme for sure will overwinter, chives will overwinter, um, any sort of, um, might have a walking onion that grows back year after year that you can use. So there's some things that, and anise hyssop, which is in this picture, that's an herb. Um, lavender can come back year after year. So uh, there's some things that you don't have to plant them every year. You can, you can just plant them and forget about it. But um, you can also put them in containers and bring them inside and use them all year round. Um, I feel like I'm going fast, but I have a little hands-on demonstration. So I'm sorry if I'm cruising right through. Uh, and if there's anything you want a repeat of, just let me know. Plant selection, um, make sure you're choosing, this is for containers specifically, but make sure you're choosing a plant that's compact. Um, with containers, it's very important that you're not picking full-sized, you know, tomato plants that need huge cages and um, tons and tons of space because they just won't do very well. You want to pick co compact varieties that will do really well. Herbs will do great in just about every container, um, especially things like mint, which we are going to use for the hands-on demo. Um, mint goes bonkers if you plant it just in your planting beds. It will completely take over. So keep that in mind. Um, even thyme, uh, you know, a lot of people use use time to like uh, line in between like their pavers. You can walk on it, things like that, um, but it will spread. So think about that when you're, you're planting your plants um, or planting your perennials because they can just really, really take over. Um, and then most herbs will perform well in full sun or partial shade locations, like really all over the board. So you can kind of fit them in. They will need some sun, um, but you can kind of fit them, them in and just about anywhere. Strawberries grow great in containers. Um, some berry, other berries do as well. All right. Now, the, the part that we were really here to talk about, which is how do you actually use these things to make food? And... Um, and that's, you know, we're gonna talk about simple syrups is, I'm trying to uh, get to a different window here so I can show you um, the, this is a simple syrup recipe and it has, this is one of the links that we included in the thing, but simple syrups are basically equal parts water and sugar that's just been boiled down until you have a syrup, like a syrup consistency. And you can add in just about anything. You can add in cinnamon, or, or spices, fruits, different things like that. Um, so you really can get a lot of flavor um, into a beverage and really quickly. So if you just wanted to, to make a drink um, and you wanted strawberry in it, well, you would have to add a lot of actual strawberries um, into that drink in order to get that flavor there. But if you made a simple syrup, which you would boil the sugar and the water and the strawberries together, um, you would be able to concentrate that flavor um, and really add it into just about anything. Um, a lot of folks will just get plain flavored seltzer or use a soda stream and make plain seltzer with a soda stream and then add these syrups in on top of that. Um, I make syrups just with uh, cinnamon sticks, with vanilla bean. Um, I make star, star anise, you know, like anise flavored licorice flavor. I use that and make a licorice syrup that I add to coffee or anything like that. Really yummy. Um, but you can use things from your garden, herbs, rosemary syrup that you can then add to different things. And it'll be kind of sugar and herbal flavor on top of it. So um, you would boil that water and sugar. And then depending on 
um, what you're adding with the moisture content and stuff like that, you would boil the other things along with it. And then you would strain out those. You can see in the picture, these are all different flavored syrups. These are, uh, I use um, recycled iced coffee bottles uh, to store mine in the fridge and they'll last for about a week. Sometimes they'll last more, they will mold, um, but you'll know when they go bad because they'll start to form mold. <laughs> But um, you can, uh, you know, store them for about a week. You can add them to cocktails. You can add them to syrup. But um, it is one of those things where if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you're going to have a party or you're going to have a get together, this would be really fun to do like a Bellini bar for Mother's Day with like Prosecco and syrups and fruit you could add in. Um, that would be really fun. So you can do um, citrus zest. I did one. You can take the rinds off of the pineapple and boil just even the rinds and the core, the parts that you can't eat. You can boil those with water and sugar and make a pineapple syrup. And it is amazing. You can add ginger to it. So the opportunities are endless when it comes to simple syrup. And that recipe is included in the chat and will be included with the um, this Zoom when it's on the website. So that's it. this is probably the number one thing you can do for a beverage garden is take those things that you've grown. Um, and this is also a great way to preserve some stuff that might be starting to go bad. So use it before it goes, it, it, it um, goes bad. But you do want to strain out any sort of solids um, because that if you have the solids in there, it'll mold a lot faster. Okay, a Virgin Mary garden. We talked about this ahead er, earlier. Um, what would you grow to grow a Virgin Mary garden? Um, tomatoes, celery, onion, bell pepper, spicy peppers, um, cucumber pickles. This would be, you know, these are pickle here that you start with a cucumber and then brine them. Um, but you can really, the, the number one thing is tomatoes. Um, the uh, recipe that is included, which of course I don't have handy. Let me see if I can get to it really quick. Um, the recipe that's included. Uh, I, I, um, started it. Ugh, I started it. Um, it started with 40 tomatoes. I thought that that was a little excessive. Good golly. I got signed out. Um, I thought that was a little, here's the original, which you can see starts with 40 medium tomatoes. Um, and I just kind of pared that down because you guys, I would assume if you've never made it before, are not going to want to make a giant batch of um, Bloody Mary mix or, or Virgin Mary mix without trying it first. So the nice thing about uh, Virgin Mary mix is you can make it as spicy or whatever flavor as you want. And you just start with all of these vegetables and you boil them. Um, you chop them all up. Not You don't have to chop them really tiny because you just want the flavor, but you want to chop them up because when you expose and you kind of um, make those cuts, it allows that flavor to seep into the the liquid. So you're going to have tomatoes and, and celery and onion, and you're going to boil it all together to make this almost like tomato sauce, but you're going to strain out the solids where tomato sauce would be thick. Um, you're going to strain out those solids and just have the juice. Um, and then you can add in hot sauce, Worcestershire sauce, um, or if you are a vegan or, uh, and you don't like Worcestershire sauce, uh, Coconut aminos are a great option. Soy sauce is a great option. Um, and then you can put in, uh, you know, pickle brine or really make it whatever you want um, to make it however you'd like it. Some people like them really spicy. Some people just like to taste actual garden in there, but that's why, you know, some people are like, oh, celery, but you really need that celery flavor to kind of make it a Bloody Mary. Um, but you can grow all of those things um, in your garden and, and do the same. But the recipe that I included that I attached is a PDF that I pared down and kind of adjusted the quantities to make it um, with 10 tomatoes rather than 40, because if you're just starting out, you probably don't have 40 tomatoes. That's a lot. That's your whole tomato garden. Whereas um, if you just use 10, you can use some of it. Uh, and then this is our hands-on demo. So I'm going to turn my camera back on and try to get myself situated here. I'm up in my office, not in like a, a kitchen. So um, I've got like a little setup here on a tray and I hope you guys can see it. Um, but we're making a strawberry mint lemonade today and it's not strawberry season. And that can be seen because there is a strawberry shortage. I tried to get fresh strawberries for this program and there are no strawberries anywhere from here to Peoria. Uh, so sorry about that folks. You're getting frozen today. Um, the original recipe actually did call for frozen, um, but you can use fresh, uh, no problem. And what I'm doing here um, is muddling them. This 
fancy majig. I don't know if you can see it. I already started, but this is a muddler. It's got a textured um, bottom that's flat and it's, oh, sorry. And I'm using it to smush these strawberries down into a paste. And I started it ahead of time um, because this is about, I don't know, 20 to 30 frozen strawberries that have been thawed. Um, so you're going to smush it down and that's going to make it more drinkable. Otherwise you can have it as chunky as you want. Um, if you, or you could like freeze it, make like frozen daiquiri, that'd be yummy too. Um, but yeah, so you could use strawberries from your garden. You could use frozen. Um, and then uh, what we're going to do is after we've muddled them, we might not muddle them all the way tonight because I can't imagine something more boring than watching me muddle these for 10 minutes. Um, but after we've muddled them as much as we want, uh, we're going to add in lemonade or lemonade concentrate. You can make your own. If you, this would be a great opportunity if you grew a citrus tree. We have a um, lime citrus tree that we keep indoors. Uh, obviously citrus trees don't overwinter in Illinois. It's not, it's not warm enough here, but uh, you can definitely grow a lemon tree inside. Um, this uh, is frozen lemonade concentrate, or you could use pre-made lemonade. Um, with frozen concentrate, um, you don't need to, uh, add simple syrup or anything with, uh, lemons. Um, can you, oh, did you need to sh do, I will stop sharing my screen here. Maybe that'll be easier. We'll put me on full screen. How about that? Sorry. I didn't pay attention to the chat. There we go. How's that? Hope that's better. I was probably really tiny. So again, if you didn't see what I was doing, this is a muddler. Uh, it's flat and textured on the bottom and I'm using it to squish down. If you don't have a muddler and do not go buy one, you can just use your wooden spoon. There's my wooden spoon and you can just, it might take a little longer, but you can kind of squish it up against the side. Really the only big point is that you're going to want to squish your um, strawberries down until they're more like a paste. And like I said, you can make your own lemonade concentrate. This is a great use for simple syrup. Um, you would mix simple syrup and lemon juice to your sweetness level. Um, this is just frozen concentrate that I, um, because again, it's not lemon season and I don't have a lemon tree, I have a lime tree. And then we're just going to add this in guys. And um, we have, so we're going to mix this together. It's going to become this pretty pink, yellowy kind of color. Maybe it doesn't look as appetizing as it does in person. For that, I apologize. Um, but it does look really nice and vibrant in, in here. And then the last ingredient, or with two more ingredients, but these are mint leaves. And I did talk about herbs. Um, but I pulled a couple of mint leaves. The recipe calls for about eight large leaves. These are not large. These are very small. So I'm just going to kind of add them to taste now. So um, a lot of times if you have two small to one large, you know, so you maybe add 16 small leaves, um, really whatever you want. But mint is just really fragrant, um, really uh, just like very herbal. And it's going to have that kind of not toothpaste -y, you know, you don't want it too much to make it toothpaste -y. but we're just going to sprinkle it in and and then the instructions say, we're obviously not going to do this today, but the instructions say to let it sit. And that's going to let, so like if you were having this for a party, you would make it and then put it into your fridge and let it sit in the fridge for like 30 minutes. Um, a really fast way to get the flavor of mint into things is to muddle it. So you could muddle it with your strawberries, but unfortunately when green and red mix together, it turns brown. Um, and so you may not want to muddle your mint in with your strawberries because it'll kind of turn this brown color. So that's why we put it in there and then we just let it sit. Um, so then you've got your mint leaves. You can kind of see them throughout. It's really beautiful. Um, if you wanted to let it sit and then strain this because you don't want chunks you could totally do that. You could put it through a fine mesh sieve or colander. Um, if you wanted to do an open hole colander, you know, that might leave some of the strawberry pieces, um, but don't do it now because that strawberry flavor will just sift right out of that lemonade. So wait that 30 minutes. And if you do want to strain it, so you don't have those strawberry chunks, you can totally do that. And then what we're going to do is taste it. Um, this is not mixed with any water. I'm going to add a little water first. I have a couple the recipe calls for about five cups of water. Don't add all five cups right at the beginning because it's going to all be about the sweetness of your concentrate, the um, 
you know, what your personal preference is, how sweet the strawberries were, because there is a lot of variety when it comes to strawberries about what's how sweet everything is. Um, some strawberries are more sweet than others. So you don't want to completely uh, make it totally bland by adding too much water. So we're gonna pour this in and you'll be able to see, I've got some chunks of strawberry. Um, it's a really beautiful pink color. And I honestly think that that is not overly sour, overly sweet. It was great. So I added with that concentrate, I only added two more, two and a half cups more of water. So that kind of shows you like, don't overly add your water before you taste it. I think you'll have to add some because otherwise it's just that really tart lemony concentrate. That's going to just be like a really big pow right in your in your face. So I'll pour a little full glass and you can kind of see it. If you wanted to kind of garnish it, um, you could put some mint sprigs on top. I pulled all my leaves off, but if you left some on the stem, you can kind of put some on top or you could cut like a strawberry little wedge and put it on top. I was going to do that, but again, there's no strawberries throughout North central Illinois at this point in time. Um, so I couldn't do that for you guys. We're not super fancy, just a little fancy. I would say maybe a straw because you're getting these chunks of strawberry, but I didn't muddle them enough. Or you could blend it as another option. If you don't want to muddle it, you could throw it in your blender or food processor, and that would work really great as well. I'm going to share my screen again and get rid of my face for you guys. And um, so again, that's a great recipe. Obviously in this picture here, that's a strange strawberry mint lemonade right there. That doesn't have any chunks of strawberry. Um, so really do whatever works for you. And if you're gonna blend it or freeze it and, and you can put it in a freezer and make like a frozen daiquiri with all these ingredients, that'd be really yummy as well. If you wanted to, I'll turn my camera back on. If you wanted to save it, you'll wanna take these mint leaves out because the mint leaves will wilt and kind of turn slimy in that liquid. So make sure you take these mint leaves out if you're gonna save it for more than like, if you're gonna have it in a couple hours or have it for a party, don't worry about it, it will be fine. But if you're gonna save it for more than that, you definitely want to um, take those mint leaves out. Bonnie, it is yummy. It's really refreshing and it feels like summer. Um, okay, that's really kind of all I have for you on, um, on beverage gardens. Um, as far as I know, we did a couple of hands-on things and there's some recipes there. Does anybody have questions? I know we had, had seen some of what people were growing. Um, I'll do wait to do my master gardener spiel um, until I see if there's any questions, but my chat is like disappearing. There it goes. Uh, I think, I can't remember who, what, who it was up at the beginning that had said, talked about what they were growing, but um, I was really excited to see that. Uh, Somebody had said they started herbs, basil, cilantro, and parsley. Um, they're all up. So you grew them from seed. That's awesome, but not ready to transplant yet. Yes, we have had, I, I should have taken a picture about of the one, our seedlings, because we actually have some really great um, seedlings there that are growing. Um, while people are uh, thinking about if they have questions, I will do my um, master gardener spiel about kind of what we are and who, what we do. Um, the Master Gardener program is uh, the flagship program for the University of Illinois Extension. Um, we do educational programming and um, hands-on gardening and maintenance of a variety of different um, garden plots around the counties. Um, if you want more information about the extension, all of these are gonna be .edu, extension.illinois.edu. And if you want master gardeners, it's slash MG, master naturalist program. So master gardeners, we do things that you grow in the ground um, and things that grow in the ground on their own, like weeds or native plants. Um, so we do all of those things. And then master naturalists are maybe some more natural plants, um, but then also animals and wildlife and things like that. Um, we have a, a coalition of Bureau, LaSalle, Marshall, and Putnam that our, our extension page is BLMP. Um, and then our offices are located in Ottawa, Meg Overacker. This is her contact information here. Um, she does all of our program coordination. She's amazing. And she can answer your questions. If you have questions about becoming a master gardener or master naturalist or programs that we could bring to you, um, please feel free to reach out to her. 
Um, and then I will do a quick plug for um, our program that we have coming up, which I believe is on May 11th. And that is going to be um, here at the LaSalle Library virtual, and it is going to be growing your own appetizers. So we'll do some bruschetta, we might do a little salsa, um, it just kind of depends on what I can get my hands on that time of year. So we're going to do um, some hands on demonstration stuff, um, just like we did tonight, maybe a little bit more in depth. Um, because you, it's a little harder to, to do appetizers without a little bit more in depth. I could easily sit here and do my beverage for you, but we'll have to get a little messy for our next one. Chop some tomatoes, stuff like that. So Donna, it didn't look like anyone had questions for me. I talked really fast today. So that might be why they're like, I'm, I'm, we're all trying to catch up. Exactly. Sorry about that. No, I think, no, I'm, I'm kidding. You it's perfect. Um, you know, I'm kind of enamored with the idea of those container gardens and, and wanting to, to plant my, you know, my Virgin Mary garden and mm -hmm. my strawberry lemonade garden and have them, you know what I mean? It's almost like it would be a conversational kind of garden where you can talk about your different containers and what's growing in them. Let's drink it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like if you had a party, and you had all the ingredients for the drink that you made right there. How fun would that be to talk about? Or even like if you had them containers in, inside in your kitchen and you could, you know, show somebody that this is the stuff that I grew and then I used it to make this drink for you. Like that's super fun. Um, I, that's one of the great things I think about gardening is that it, you kind of get to feel that sense of like accomplishment because you grew those things and then you cooked with them, you know, awesome. It really is. Now, you know, I didn't know that about, um, there's a lot of things I don't know about gardening. However, I didn't know about it, having to remove the mint. Mm. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, start to biodegrade on your, on your beautiful strawberry lemonade. Yeah. Uh, it's, that's an important point. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that. Yeah. So the, I mean, any sort of green, if you think about like when you've gotten a bag of lettuce salad and you've had right. it in the bag for too long and it started to get, um, and it starts to get, you know, wilty or slimy, that's just going to be too much moisture. And it's, it's starting to get old. It gets bruised. You know, we've kind of mixed all this mint together and it's gotten bruised, um, you know, that, that it kind of, uh, starts to degrade. So yeah, you want to kind of keep it out of there for an extended period of time. Anna, thank you for answering a question, answering, asking a question. Um, tips on herb growing mine die easily in containers. How often do you water yours if indoors and when, it, if it's, do you water when the soil is completely dry? So my rule of thumb or finger is if I, if I kind of poke my soil, maybe an inch down and it's still dry, then it needs water. Okay. And you want to kind of water it until it doesn't feel dry anymore, which is, you know, that's kind of in uh, layman's terms for it, but you're going to water it. I mean, your containers depending on if you run your air conditioning or your heat a lot, they could mean, need water more than once a week. So you kind of want to touch them and just kind of see every couple of days, you know, if they're going to be dry, you know, that sounds a little high maintenance, but once you kind of figure out a system, you'll, you'll know a little bit better. Our house plants, usually we water them once a week. My seedlings that I'm growing, um, I have to water them every day. So you kind of want to pay attention. You want to put them somewhere that they're going to be easy, like maybe by your kitchen sink, if you have the ability to, to kind of put a shelf there or something like that. Um, you know, mine's right in front of a window. So I, I, I want to have a shelf right there near my window so that it gets lots of light and I can just, you know, water them when I'm thinking about it. So um, you could also put a couple of ice cubes in there every couple of days on the surface and then water will melt in slowly. So yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes tough, um, to kind of know, but once you kind of pay attention and get a system, you'll know exactly how long it takes for your plants to dry out. I hope that answered your question. Bonnie says I've used nasturtium and borage flowers and salad. My opening picture suggests that freezing them in ice would make beautiful additions to your mocktails. Yes, absolutely. I don't know if it would taste like anything, but wouldn't it look cool? Um, that is a picture that I, I can't remember where it came from and I can zoom back here. Um, but yeah, that's another great idea. Like putting your herbs into little ice cubes. I, I don't know if you've ever made like a, like a cocktail or a, I'm sorry, punch float where you freeze like cranberries or citrus, um, into like a, like a jello mold ring or, a bunt pan and you could put different things like herbs and, and pieces of citrus and 
cranberries and you freeze it in water or juice or whatever, but um, you freeze it and then you, you unmold it in, and it keeps all your drinks cold, but it looks beautiful and it adds a little flavor too, like little surprises. So um, yeah, they would make really good additions. Basically, if you can eat it and you like the taste of it, why not put it in a cocktail? You know what I mean? You could put like little rosemary ice cubes and put them in with like an herbal, um, like faux G and T or something like that. They have like those, um, they're, they're like herbal elixirs. Like I talked about before that if you didn't want to have gin, you could have like a fake one and then add tonic and herbal ice cubes to it. That'd look really fun. So yeah, definitely Bonnie. I think that's a great idea. Natalie, I have a fill-in question here while mm -hmm. people are ruminating about everything yep. you said. Um, are there things that can be grown in the garden that can be added to a hot beverage, for example? I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. I'm thinking some kind of tea or... Like a hot toddy kind of a thing. Like if you, so let's think. So if you, I mean, if you had an apple tree, you can make a hot apple cider with actual slices. Yeah, mint, definitely. You could do a mint tea. Uh, lavender makes a great, you know, herbal addition to teas. Um, you could do any sort of lemon. Um, if you grew a lemon tree in your, inside your house, um, rosemary would make a great, depending on the, the depending on the flavor, um, would be a great addition. Bay, if you grew a, like a bay rum or bay leaf, that would be a great addition. I'm trying to think of what, mostly I think herbal would make the most sense. Um, I'm trying to think if there was like a, I feel like if you had a hot beverage that was more like vegetable, like a hot Bloody Mary sounds like you would be drinking soup. And that doesn't necessarily make me happy to think about, but I mean, soup is great, but if I was drinking it, I don't know. I don't know. I'll put that out there to you guys. You can, you can make your decision. Lemon thyme would be great. Anna's Hisop makes great herbal additions. Um, echinacea, which is, uh, you know, wildflower, but you can make echinacea tea and that one's great too. Hmm. Let's think. I can keep just listing things. I don't know if that um, if that works for you guys, uh, thyme, lemon and thyme together are really great. You could do like a lemon, thyme and honey, um, with a little hot water that would absorb all of those herbal flavors. That would be really, really good. Yeah. That does sound delicious. I'm mm -hmm. for that one. That's I will look up Bonnie. I'll send you some echinacea tea. I just looked it up because we grow echinacea here. So I'll send you a link to it. That's great. I don't know. I don't have any other questions. I wanted to just share that I did. Um, I was motivated by your programs. Mm -hmm. I, and I did. And um, I think we have 120 seedlings. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and like you, I have trouble, you know, disposing of the ones who aren't doing quite as, as, as well. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling I'm going to probably have double 120. And that doesn't count the ones that are grown directly in the, in the dirt, like the, um, I, root I do think, and, it, and, and Bonnie, you may know, maybe if there's another master gardener in the audience, um, I do think that the food pantry will take seedlings or small plants. Oh, is um, that right? I believe so. Um, and they will give them away to, to people that are on their food pantry list. So, uh, that's something to think about, or even you could do it at the library and just say, Hey, we've got 10 pepper plants free to the first, um, to the first people that come pick it up and, you know, people would just definitely come grab them because you did all the work for them. So that's, that's a great idea. Thank you for letting me know that I, I'm concerned because my husband thinks that we need more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have 110, so you beat me, but I haven't planted my two week seedlings yet. So I'll, I'll probably pass you up here in just a little bit. Cause I haven't planted all my herbs yet or anything like that. So, um, I've got, I've got some more work to do, uh, okay. this weekend, but, uh, but yeah, so we'll have to compare how successful it was later in the summer when, when we're doing another program. Uh, Anna did ask strawberries in the garden. How do you prevent the critters from getting them first? We have a hard time with this too, Anna. Um, we have ants that come from the, from below and we have birds that come from the top. So there's a couple different things you can do. Um, getting your strawberries and making sure that they're not resting in the soil. Um, because once they're in the soil, they can start to kind of get brown spots and rot, and then the ants come faster. Um, so sometimes if you see a, uh, a berry 
you can just move it so it's resting on the leaves rather than the soil. And then just picking them as soon as they're ripe. You gotta go out and check them all the time. But if you're worried about you know, rabbits or birds, putting some fine mesh netting over the top so that the sun can still come through, but not the critters. Um, you can either put up, you know, right over the top so that they, you know, it's just resting on, it's not tight down, but it's just resting on the top and it's staked down on the side so that things can't, you know, creep underneath it. Um, that's another option, but it is, it is the constant gardener's battle. Um, garden pests are one of, you know, their nature, we love it, but it's always a problem, you know, for, for gardeners, we had to try to get to the food, but you have to just kind of check. We go out and harvest our berries almost every day because we have a couple that come into ripeness every day. Um, so yeah, unfortunately I don't have a ton of great advice. You can also uh, spray a solution. Um, we usually do one that's like water and Dawn soap and hot sauce, and we spray it on with, you can get that hose adapter where you put the mixture in like the little reservoir and then you, you screw it onto your hose and it sprays that mixture and that makes it distasteful to pests. Um, so that, and then you just wash off, you know, when you wash your fruit or vegetables before you eat it. So that will sometimes help with things like aphids and stuff too. Um, maybe not aphids, sorry. Don't, don't quote me on that, but things, other pests, bug pests as well, will, will don't like the taste of the soap or the hot sauce. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. There's some things that you can do to kind of keep things away. Unfortunately, it's not foolproof. And you can look it up, Anna. There, sorry, I was drinking my strawberry lemonade. You can look it up. There's a hundred different varieties out there on the internet. You can just look up like pet uh, homemade pet repellent or something like that. And there'll be a bunch of different with the exact ratios and what you need to do. But yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. It was a great audience. You know, we got like 14 of us, so well, 14, including me and Donna and Rachel, but um, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And uh, again, we'll be back in May. I will be back in May with Cook Your Own, Grow Your Own Appetizers. And uh, thanks, Donna and Rachel. Thank you, Natalie. Once again, a jam-packed informational <laughs> program that we can just <laughs> go with and try to <laughs> curb our enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck to you. I haven't figured out how to curb my enthusiasm yet, but um, you know, thanks. And it was nice to, to virtually see you guys again, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. We will. Thank you again, right. Natalie. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.